Hello, so I thought I'd do a video about halberds or sort of pole arms versus swords versus maces and talking about some of the sort of key features of them and what made them good at what they did and sort of which logistically were the most sensible for fielding an army with. So this isn't necessarily going to be strictly about the medieval period but um, I think this video will probably reflect mostly on the medieval sort of European period. Um, so what I've got in my hand is a bill hook, and a bill hook um, was sort of the English pole arm of choice for a lot of the medieval period. It's basically um, very similar to a halberd. It's got your cleaving section here, it's got your spike for thrusting at the top, and then it's got a reverse beak for sort of pulling riders from horseback, um, piercing armour, and sort of grappling shields away from people. So. The great thing about pole arms, as I said before in videos on pole arms, is they are super cheap to make because a wooden shaft doesn't really cost anything to make um, in the grand scheme of things and the only forged metal you need is quite small for the head itself. So pole arms are obviously brilliant. Now spears are a type of pole arm, like the most famous and common type really. Pretty much every human civilization on the planet has made spears at some point or another. So it's obviously a working design, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and spears certainly worked well. So the great thing about pole arms, as said, is they're very cheap to manufacture, and they're very cheap to train soldiers how to use. It's quite instinctive for a human to be able to thrust uh, fairly well with something like this. So obviously space is a bit limited here. Now, the more spikes and everything you add on to a pole arm, the bit, it gets a bit more complicated, but in general, um, it's just different movements, obviously, chopping sort of for that section or that section, you know, or pulling and being able to push it in certain ways, but primarily it's there for the thrusting point. It's like a spear with add-ons basically, most medieval pole arms. So these are obviously the most practical weapons for issuing to mass infantry. Um, so what about side arms? Because obviously lots of people due to Hollywood and things get the impression that every single soldier in the medieval period carried a sword and they were incredibly well trained with swords and everything else. Whereas in reality, um, swords like falchions were the um, more practical sort of combat ready swords um, in a sense. Things like arming swords and long swords were more of a status symbol sword. That's not to say they couldn't obviously cut people up because they were designed to do that. But um, the issue is obviously with swords as a sidearm is that they're not very good at penetrating armour because it's just essentially you know, a sharpened bar of metal, in a sense, a sword. Um, you can thrust with them and you can cut with them, obviously, um, but what they do is they're very good against people not wearing armour or wearing light armour. You know, they're very mobile, especially something like a falchion when you've sort of started building your muscles up to swing a sword properly. Um, you know, they are very effective at what they do. But the thing is with a sword, as said, is against armour they're not brilliant. Um, this is much more of a weapon for, as said, cleaving three people without armour than actually, you know, going against people with armour. The other issue of a sword, of course, is that the amount of metal needed to make one, um, which might surprise you even compared to something like the billhook head, is generally more, and it's a more skill-intensive and slow process making a sword, actually. Banging the steel out to the right sort of shape and size. Um, and getting the balancing right with something like a bill hook because it's on the pole it's a lot more forgiving about how well made bits of it are um, whereas with something like a sword for a very well tempered and balanced sword it has a lot more requirements to actually work like that so obviously as I said the Hollywood myth is that every soldier on the battlefield carried a sword uh, which really wasn't the case at all pole arms are the most prevalent thing however I would argue the mace is a much better side arm than the sword so let's have a look at a mace So this is that window steel craft mace. As you can see, I've got rid of a lot of that weird fuzzy sort of salt stuff at the top. Um, I've just done that through oiling it, stripping some of the original paint kind of off and um, keeping a magnet on it as a sort of sacrificial rust magnet or whatever. But a mace um, is pretty straightforward what a mace is. It's a um, sort of bashing weapon. Now, it's quite intrinsic, just like with a pole arm, to humans to be able to smack something really hard with a blunt object. And that's what the mace does. Now you also get things like war hammers, which also are very effective like maces, but the point of something like a mace is that you've simply got a hard, heavy thing that you hit somebody with. Now, the reason that maces are good, obviously this is a flanged mace, so the um, impacts are amplified a bit. Right, I've answered the door, it was a gas mask uh, turning up. 
delivered by a postman, obviously the gas mask doesn't just turn up at my house on its own. Anyway, um, so getting back to maces, um, what makes maces so good, obviously, is that it's very easy to understand how to bash somebody with a um, solid heavy object, because sort of built into your caveman genes, I guess, as a human. Grog smash with heavy thing. So, um, maces are good for that reason. And they are very good because blunt force trauma is a ver incredibly effective against armour. So, while something as big as a pole arm might be effective against armour just due to its mass and size and the physical force of having a big pole attached to something, um, the sword isn't really, as said, because the sword is designed really for cleaving and stabbing people without armour on or very light armour. The mace will work just effectively against people with light armour or no armour on than um, people with armour on. Now, the reason for this is because obviously real life is not like a video game where there's stats and some things are better against other things. So, in a video game, it might say, wow, because somebody's not got armour on, um, you know, the mace is less effective at damaging them. That's completely not true at all. If I didn't have a helmet on and this was swung at my head as hard as possible, uh, that is going to do a lot of damage to my brains on the impact of my skull. Um, if I have a helmet on, it's going to negate some of that, but not negate it very much, because obviously with a mace, what is going to happen is that, um, you know, it's going to crush the helmet in and it's going to deliver a lot of trauma and force to a helmet, even if there's a helmet there. So, you know, a mace is actually a better sidearm than the sword, in my opinion, because it will work well against people who are unarmoured and work well against people that are armoured. Same goes for something like a warhammer, you know. You can swing a warhammer at somebody who's not wearing armour or who is wearing armour, and both the hammer and the pick side of it are going to do damage to either one of those people. So, as a sidearm, the mace is actually probably better than the sword. Now, the sword is certainly a lot more mobile. So what I mean by that is because obviously the mace has to have mass to it to be able to... Um, you know, deliver force, it's much slower and cumbersome to swing a mace around for ages, you know. As much as you wouldn't need much force um, to fatally injure somebody with a mace, you'd still need more than a sword if they were armoured or unarmed. So, my point being that with a well made sword, you can certainly, you know, swing that about faster and for longer than a mace. However, saying that, as I said, the mace, you know, wouldn't need many impacts to uh, do its job well. So, hopefully this video has been somewhat informative. Um, especially because, you know, like I said, you get all that strange crowd of people that think, think real-life items have video game stats, where, um, like I was saying, it's very strange that people think a mace would not really work against somebody if they're not wearing armour. Um, humans are very squishy, you know, if a heavy flanged mace is, uh, you know, swung at somebody at speed, if they've not got a helmet on, it's going to do even more damage. It's, you know, it's like if you're riding a bicycle or a motorbike, there's a reason you'd have a crash helmet on. It's because if you hit your head on a concrete floor, um, you're pretty much done for. So, you know, having a helmet on um, negates it, but it's just having lots of armour on doesn't negate a mace too much. Because, you know, the physical force of a mace being swung at high speed or a warhammer is going to, you know, shock through that armour if it doesn't crumple it in fairly easily. Um, you know, if you have a helmet on and you're bashed hard enough, it's still going to cause lots of damage to your neck and everything else, even assuming there was enough padding and space in the helmet that it wasn't going to actually cave your head in on the impact. So, there you go. As much as a sword is a sort of common, you know, fantasy and everything film uh, weapon, as a sort of weapon in the medieval battlefield, it's only really good against people with no armour or light armour on. Whereas something like, for a standard infantry, a pole arm, like that bill, would be very good at pretty much anything, because obviously it's going to stab through people, no problem with that point on it, um, when it's thrust, um, and obviously the armour piercing spikes and the cleaving sections on it are still going to do a lot of damage to people with armour on. Um, but obviously something like a mate has said, in reality, is very good all round. Blunt force trauma does lots and lots of damage to people, you know, it's very hard to walk off a massive impact to the head or chest um, that crushes bones and, you know, wins you um, with something like a mace. So, yeah, the mace is actually the most practical of all the weapons, I'd say, in terms of um, it will work against people with or without armour on. But for mass-producing uh, weapons that are actually effective on the battlefield, 
the um, halberds and the sort of pole arms are obviously the most effective. But yeah, so in reality, if you were a knight or something, and you did um, have the option of having a sort of sidearm rather than just your main weapon, um, you would probably actually do better with a mace than you would with a sword.